Welcome back. We've got another brand new colorway in the pots today. This one is called Monkey See Monkey Do. And it is beautifully neutral. That is the best way to describe it. We've got a little bit of white, a little bit of chestnut, a little bit of orange, a little bit of black and gray. It is a beautiful colorway, especially for anybody who's looking for neutrals. We do have some other variegated colorways that go really, really well with this one. I'm excited to show you guys. But the first thing we need to do, obviously, get the yarn in the pots, get that soak in there, get our trench into the middle. Now we put this trench in here so that we can actually keep the right hand side white. So we don't want any dye going over to that white side. We want to keep it as white as possible. And uh, yeah, got the soak in there, shot of vinegar, shot of water, drop that pH down, allows your acid dyes to strike. So dead center here, we're going to take and toss um, some chestnut and golden yellow, which is really going to come across as kind of a golden brown. Like it is, it is a beautiful color. Um, we've used this a couple times, not this exact recipe, but we've used this same idea a couple times, especially when we were looking at our Fox colorway, um, easy breezy, beautiful cover squirrel, things of the sort. So this color is very familiar to me and one of my favorites, mixing browns with oranges. It just really kind of creates some depth in that color. And then we've got a little bit of gray and that is it for this side. We're trying to keep it simple. Now I definitely wouldn't go as far to say that this is a pastel colorway in any way, shape or form, but it's definitely one of our lighter colorways. Um, usually when I'm dying, it is bright and bold and that is just how I work, right? So we've got that golden brown in there. We've got that gray. Let's get our fingers in here, get it mixed up, leave that top nice and white. Now, when we're leaving white in a colorway, we need to cook it. You need to cook it for a nice long time to make sure that those colors set. Because if you were to flip this a little bit too soon, that brownie orange would just spread throughout the white and completely ruin what you were trying to do in the first place. So cook it for a good long while. We're going to give this about 15 minutes in the pots. It's going to get nice and toasty. No, no, I'm not going to make you sit through that. That would be horrible. But that's it. The power of editing is at my fingertips. And uh, yeah. Yarn's cooked, let's get it flipped. Now you're gonna notice the gray doesn't really go that far through the yarn, but the brown definitely does. And that's why I was saying it, it's really, really important to make sure that you cook these colors to the best of your abilities. Um, and when I say cook, we use restaurant warmers, so they get quite hot, but they don't get boiling hot. And that's, that's key there. You don't wanna boil your yarn. You don't wanna felt it in any way, shape or form. You just wanna get it toasty, so. There we go, we got it flipped. We've got that trench back into the middle. Now this side, we're going to dye the entire side. We're going to take and toss that same brown into the middle here. A um, Little bit lighter, of course, not as much golden yellow, just a little bit more towards the chocolate brown side of things, very light. And then we're gonna take and do a gray on the left and a gray on the right. Yes, I probably could leave a little bit more white in the pot. Um, my concern with doing something like that is that's a whole lot of white. Right, and, and if you were just taking knit this up or or you know fan it out into its its hank form, um, more than half of the the yarn would be white, and that's that's just a little bit much. If you're gonna dye yarn, I think you should dye the yarn. So a little bit of white, a okay, lots of white, unless that's exactly what you're going for. It's not my thing. I like to make sure that we toss some dye on that yarn. So even then, we went with a really really light gray. We are going to keep it simple. And then on the other side, we're gonna to toss just a little bit of a darker gray. These are both, um, sorry, the right-hand side is quite a bit lighter and the left-hand side is the same gray that we used um, on that left side on the other side, on the front. All right, got it in here. Now, when you are working with some lighter dyes, this stuff actually cooks off pretty quick. You don't really have to fight with it too much. Um, the other benefit is there's absolutely no dye left in the pots after we cook it. It is crystal clear water. You don't really have to take and fight too hard to rinse it. You just want to make sure that you're using enough water to neutralize your, your acid, right? So you just want to get all of that vinegar water out of the yarn, keep everything neutral, get it back to where it needs to be. Let's cook it off. There we go. All right, all cooked. And as you can see, I'm, I'm pulling these up and there is nothing in the pots. Look how clear that, was water, that water is. It is 
crystal clear. Absolutely beautiful. All of that dye soaked up into our yarn. We didn't have to fight with it in any way, shape, or form. And rinsing is going to be so easy. So, once you've rinsed and dried, it's time to skein. Now, one thing I want to mention on this one here is... I, I basically dyed this colorway to have our color in the center and then we did a little bit of white on one side and a gray on the other side so that when I skeined this, I could keep all of that color down at the bottom. Uh, yes, there are always ties sticking out on a skein. If you want them to look pretty, just tuck those in. Doesn't hurt in any way, shape or form. You just tuck them into the middle of the skein and it really, really cleans up the skein. So something else to keep in mind, but um, we've also done this same process with a couple of our other colorways. Um, for example, Peacock's Feather. I, that one had like a, a bright pinkish purple in the center and then some greens on the outside. And when you skein it up, it just, it really comes across if you can keep that color in the center. And it, it, it just, it's something unique, right? Something different. Um, instead of having that variation go throughout the entire skein, you could really just kind of pull it to one side and it's... It's, it's kind of a cool effect. It doesn't change really how it's going to knit up. We'll go into that next, but um, just in Hank form, twisted Hank form here, it is, it's kind of cool. I, I, I like it, right? We just keep that color to the bottom and, and you kind of have that gradient go up through the Hank itself. It's it's different and that's that's what we do. We like to do some, some different stuff, right? Can't always do the same old boring stuff. Fancy it up a little bit. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> I love this colorway. Okay, so knitted swatch. Um, I want to go into a little bit more depth about our Addy Express. Um, the, the view I did on our last video is a little hard to see. So when you're looking at all the needles here, there are 44. You want to alternate from the back to the front all the way around. And then when you get back to the start here, we are going to stop and put it through the guide itself. Now, you need to crank this off by hand. And the reason for that is if you're using the drill, it pulls the yarn really, really tight. So I've got quite a bit of slack off the Swift and I, I just wanna get three or four rounds done to try and give us a little bit of slack in the work itself so that those stitches aren't so tight. I, I have had before where I've broken one of these hooks because I was using the drill too early. So. Make sure you're, you know, three or four uh, rotations into it before you add the drill on it. And no, the manufacturer does not suggest doing this in any way, shape, or form. We're just a little short on time. So this is what we like to do. We're going to crank this up. We're going to get some rows done. No, I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. And then we'll, we'll basically show how it comes out. Look at that. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, so keep going just a little bit. You slow down. Everything kind of detaches. Um, normally, if you were actually working this into a project, you need to finish off the ends. So you would um, follow the manufacturer's instructions, use a needle, and basically close off those, those loops before you pull it off the machine itself. I, on the other hand, we're not going to even go that far. We're going to put this back into hang form and twist it up and let it go. So there we go. There is that knitted swatch. Try and straighten out my, my stitches just a little bit. Very pretty. Absolutely love this one. Now, when we're talking about the Swifts, I want to show our ties because we've got we've got two ties per skein on most of our yarn, except for our Chunky. Our Chunky has four. This one tie right here, you can kind of see it. We've got four strands. One, two, three, four. So basically that is a loop around the yarn. That's two of them. And the other two are the start and finish of your hank. Um, one of them is going to kind of tuck in from the back of the hank and one of them is going to be on the front of the hank. You can kind of see this one kind of starts to go in behind. Um, if you were to pull on this one, it would flip the whole hank on the swift and there's always a chance you're going to run into some knots. Uh, not knots in our yarn itself, but basically that strand is going to grab onto other strands and create a knot. Um, to be honest, I don't think I've seen a knot in one of our hanks yet, but... There's always a first time. So anyways, we're going to get it wrapped up on our twister here through the gauge around the twister two or three times. And you'll notice I've got a little bit of slack on the table itself. We don't want it pulling too hard until we can get this thing rocking. So once that tightens up a little bit, you can speed up the machine, get it kicking. Look at that. Well, this is our DK weight. I think it takes about four to five minutes to do a cake. 
on uh, on this machine at this speed. So get it kicking. Slow this thing down here a little bit. There we go. Getting towards the end here. Once that strand comes off the Hank, we turn it off real quick. Sorry, the Swift. Turn it off real quick. And can I get a good photo? Not really. Okay, let's pull it off. No big deal. Get that off. And look at that. I love these Romarin Cakers. They are a beautiful machine to work with. Yes, they're quite expensive, but they do the job really, really well. So there's your cakes. Beautiful. Love them. Yes, we do have a caking service on the website as well. Anyways, let's do some pairings while we're at it. So this here is Monkey See, Monkey Do. Coming up beside that is the first frost. It's another beautiful colorway. Then up beside that, we have Birch Bark, which is just basically some whites and some blacks and grays. Um, tossing on the other side there, we've got Life Begins After Coffee. Another beautiful set of browns and grays. Love it. This one here is a newer colorway. This one's called S'more, Please. Lots of dark browns in this one. Beautiful. And then finally, for all the trees. Just a nice dark one. So, to me, this colorway screams a brown fade. It really does. I, I, yeah, it's got a little touch of color in there, but I think it plays quite well. Moving into the semi-solids. Um, actually, but what I found paired with this colorway is the same as what paired with the last one. So we've got our mouse gray, pairs up with pretty much every color ever. If you're ever looking for anything, hit up that mouse gray. Next up, we've got charcoal, kind of in the same family group, a lot darker though. And um, these ones, they really just fit quite nice. And then we've got the chestnut. Anywhere there's mouse gray, there's probably going to be chestnut. That's for sure. Um, up next beside that, we have our creamy coffee, which goes uh, just a little bit more into the orange side of things. And I thought, I thought these four really paired up really, really, really nice. And then if you're looking for a little kick of color, um, underbrush, it's, it's kind of a, a green ish color uh, leaning towards the gray side of things. It's kind of a grayish green. So, um, I just, I just felt these, these five really sit quite well with this colorway. Um, obviously these aren't you know, the only answers, but, um, this is just what paired nice in my studio. That's all. So there we have it up on the board. We have monkey see monkey do beautiful colorway. As always, there is a swatch available. The last photo of every single listing on our website. As always, look at that beautiful colorway, beautiful inspiration, beautiful monkeys. I love it. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you join me again soon.